During April 1945, the British offensive was blazing its way to Berlin across northern Germany. The days of Hitler's Nazi Germany were numbered when the British 11th Armored Division reached Bergen-Belsen on April 5, 1945, which held over 120,000 prisoners. The uh, experience and the sights and the sounds and the smells were absolutely uh, words cannot describe. And I can't describe it either. It was absolutely horrendous. Never has anything, we'd ever seen anything like this. Uh, there were thousands of dead bodies lying about. What they found there could only be described as horror or hell on earth. The carpenters at Hamelin Prison had to carve dozens of fresh gallows to serve justice to the 480 guards who created this hell. Welcome to Nutty History. And today we will look at what punishment was served to the Beast of Belsen, who were responsible for committing horrendous acts at the Bergen-Belsen camp. When the British liberated the prisoners of the Belsen concentration camp, most of them were suffering from typhus, dysentery, extreme malnutrition, and many other virulent diseases. Current estimates put the number of deaths at the Belsen camp at more than 50,000, consisting of Jewish people, Czechs, Poles, Christians, and many more diverse people. The most prominent name among people who lost their lives at Belsen is, of course, Anne Frank. On arrival, soldiers found survivors cramped together in subhuman conditions, right next to heaps of thousands of deceased. But beyond the barrier was a whirling cloud of dust, the dust of thousands of slowly moving people, laden in itself with the deadly typhus germ. And with the dust was a smell sickly and thick, the smell of death and decay, of corruption and filth. Out of 60,000 prisoners that were freed from the camp on April 15th, Nearly 14,000 succumbed to their ailments in the next two months, long before justice would be served to the men and women who committed it. According to one of the survivors, Alice Lokohana, the camp was already riddled with the deceased when she was brought there. Her group of arrivals had to walk over them to reach their assigned camp. Living inmates were no better either as people were crying, begging, and praying everywhere for a few drops of water. Several days later, we arrived to bergen -Bels in Bergen-Belsen was hell on earth. So what happened to the people responsible for committing such cruelty? At least 480 people were working as guards at the Bergen-Belsen camp when the British Army took over. The first of the Belsen trials was officially called the Trial of Josef Kramer and 44 others. SS Hamsternfuhrer Josef Kramer was the commandant of the Belsen camp at the time of its liberation. He had overseen the Belsen camp since December 1944, and he had earned that position by overseeing many of the planned demise of Jewish prisoners at Auschwitz, acting as a senior camp administrator. Kramer had gained infamy by conducting a project to create a Jewish skeleton collection for a university by ordering 80 deaths in chambers filled with gas. He was put in charge of these chambers in 1944 at Auschwitz. When the typhus outbreak in Belsen happened, the camp saw nearly 300 dead every single day. Of this total of 40,000, 4,250 are acutely ill or dying of virulent disease. Typhus, typhoid, diphtheria, dysentery, pneumonia, and childbirth fever are rife. As the war was approaching its end, Belsen was designated as a reception camp for prisoners who were evacuated further east due to the Soviet army decimating everything as it advanced westwards towards Berlin. Kramer, as the head of the camp, made it worse with his brutal regime and earned him his moniker, the Beast of Belsen. As guards were fleeing in April and the administration of the Nazi party was collapsing, Kramer chose to stay behind. He watched people struggle and be consumed by rabid rats as many prisoners were too weak to fight them off. When the British arrived, Kramer took them on a tour of the camp, seeming unapologetic about the horrific scene. During the trial, Kramer either tried to blame his authorities for his crimes or took no responsibility at all and deflected. He admitted minor crimes like boxing the ears of a Russian captive and forcing sick prisoners to attend the morning call, but denied any major offenses or confessed to doing them only because he was ordered to do so. 
The trial lasted 54 days, from September to November 1945. After Anita Lasker testified that Kramer was responsible for the selections for the gas chamber at Auschwitz, his fate was sealed. And then started the bells in life where things got worse and worse and the death marches starting, all the other camps that were, were not liberated but evacuated started arriving in Belsen. and bells and became an inferno. I mean, thousands and thousands of people came into bells and in state, you know, half dead people dragged themselves in there in these death marches. The jury found him guilty of crimes against humanity and sentenced him to death by the rope, which took place on December 13, 1945, at Hamlin Jail, where he was imprisoned. In January 1945, Kramer welcomed one more colleague from Auschwitz, Dr. Fritz Klein. Dr. Klein is the infamous man in this well-known picture, standing among heaps of deceased prisoners. Originally born in modern Romania, Dr. Klein served in the Romanian army from 1939 to 1943 as a paramedic on the Eastern Front. He was considered a Volksdeutsche, or ethnic German, so when Hitler demanded Romanian dictator Marshal Antonescu release all ethnic Germans in the Romanian army, he became a soldier in the Waffen-SS. He arrived at Auschwitz in December 1943 and was asked to make a selection for the sentencing of prisoners to the chambers. Ich heiße Dr. Fritz Klein, bin Arzt seit anderthalb Jahren im Konzentrationslagern, bin Deutscher aus Siebenwürgen, 58 Jahre alt und spreche heute am 24. April 1945. Ella Lingens Reiner, an Austrian physician who ended up in Birkenau for her anti-fascist activism and harboring Jewish people in her home, asked Klein how he reconciles his actions with his ethical obligation as a physician. Klein replied with the following remark. Klein was well aware of how primitive hospitals and health services for the prisoners were when he arrived there, and yet did nothing to improve the deteriorating health of the prisoner. He made no efforts to put a stop to the outbreak, even when diseases were claiming two to three hundred lives per day. During the trial of Yusuf Kramer and 44 others, Klein asserted that he did everything in his power to provide food and medicine to the prisoners, but there was very little evidence of this when the British Army witnessed the opposite when they arrived there. On further interrogation, Klein admitted that when he arrived at Belsen, he was under the impression that this was an exchange camp for the sick, but soon he realized that Belsen was a death camp, a poor excuse of a hospice to let people die. Like Kramer, Anita Laster's testimony sealed Klein's fate as well, and he was given the rope as well. Nearly 37,000 SS guards were responsible for actively participating in the daily pain, mistreatment, and demise of the prisoners at the Nazi concentration camps. It is believed that nearly 4,000 of these guards were female overseers, or Aufseherin, who ignored orders and took the matter into their own hands despite the lack of any such directive. The role of the female SS was a far cry from the Kinder, Kusche, Kirsche, or children, kitchen and church propaganda embedded in Nazi philosophy. According to the charges brought against Irma Gresa at the Belsen trial in 1945, or the beautiful beast of Belsen, she was responsible for pummeling female prisoners of the camp unconscious, sometimes fatally. Irma was infamous for using a whip made of cellophane at Belsen and was also accused of administering lethal sterilization experiments. According to Wendy Adele Marie Sardi, the night before her grim sentencing, Grisa sang Nazi songs until the early hours of the morning with Johanna Bormann. Even during the sentencing, Grisa was the only female convict to stay defiant and appeal the verdict. Grisa, along with Johanna Bormann, Ruth Clausius, and Elizabeth Volkenroth, were also gibbeted on December 13, 1945, before Kramer and fellow male SS guards. But many of them managed to hide from justice and return to their ordinary lives, as if the crimes they committed never happened. Do you know any other facts about Bergen Belsen we didn't cover? We hope you learned something from the video, and you can show it by liking the video and subscribing for more amazing Nutty History content.